Okay, welcome everyone. If you want to come, thank you. All good. Um, if you want to come closer, I'm not scary. Um, today I'm talking about promoting veganism online. My name is Lee Chantel and I'm from Australia, so happy to be here. And um, I've just spoken to a few of you privately before. If there's anything I don't cover in the talk, just let me know. way to see if you're on top of your social media game and things like that. Um, moving forward with a bit of a plan instead of just throwing everything up in the air and hoping it works. Um, why visuals are important, how to create your own content and in particular branded content. Um, some ideas for shareable content, how to set goals, commit to them, which is key. Um, online etiquette and taking um, tips for taking time out. So I've been involved in marketing and promotion for many years and you can't really see any of these little cool images I've added in my slide. Um, but I've been um, doing music promotion and my past life I used to be a bit of a rock star. So I've been promoting my music since 2001 and I've also been promoting events and festivals since about 2009 when I had my own not-for-profit and put on some big festivals in Brisbane, Australia, where I'm from. Um, I've been doing content creation and social media since about 2009 and now I focus more on consulting and showing people how to do things rather than doing them for them. And that's in regards to social media and marketing and online promotion. Um, I give lots of lectures and, oh, the little light works good. Um, probably can't read that writing, but I give a lot of lectures and workshops on a variety of things from social media, marketing, online etiquette, and to staging effective events and engaging volunteers. I've run a website called VivaLaVegan.net. I've run that for over a decade, and there's a lot of information on there over 10 years of information and I've been giving a lot of vegan lifestyle talks that sort of time as well. My latest book is a book called Vegan Athletes, um, so I've interviewed over 100 athletes from all over the world. And so all these different things I've marketed over the years, so that's just giving, me, giving you all a bit of a background on why I um, can talk to you about these things. So, um, apologies for some of the screenshots and the information that you're not really going to get everything out of because you can't see, but this is just a diagram showing what happens in one minute on all these different channels, so from YouTube to Facebook and Twitter. There's so many different things that happen, whether it's people sharing events, liking photos, um, retweeting and all that. And there's just so many tools that we have nowadays to actually achieve our goals. So how many people here have a blog or a website? How many people have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus, Instagram? Oh, I like another Google Plus person. Not many people on Google Plus. So um, there's all these different ways that you can actually share your goals and you can promote whether it's your business, whether it's yourself or veganism or activism to a wider public. And um, it's really easy to do these things now. Um, it used to be quite hard to do them. Now it's much easier. And um, I think one of the best ways to get your message out is online and in particular social media. So we'll talk about that a bit today. And um, I think, you know, all of us have different skills and different skill sets and different passions. So please don't underestimate those things that you love and that you're passionate about to really help spread the course. So there's a heap of social media sites. There's something like over 200 social media sites. And those ones that we were just talking about before, what was that six I think I asked you about? And 
and there's just so many to keep up with. This is the difference between what used to happen before and now. So in the olden days, people used to release a press release and that would go out to the media, that would go out to newspapers and places like that and then they would either report on it, write an article or not. And that was then read by the consumers or customers and then you would do something with it. And if you compare that to what happens now, social media is linking everyone to each other. So there's no more hierarchical sort of um, things happening. It's whoever shares something can go to someone like them. It's not waiting for a publisher or someone else to send a press release. It's getting to whoever you want to, and it's based on trust a lot of the time. And um, there's some really good things about social media. There's sometimes not so good things, of course, but um, it's really good to focus on the process and not just the outcome. So if you've got a new store, if you've got something you're working on, you can show the process of setting up these things and doing that instead of just saying, oh, here's my store, for example. Um, and it recognises these networks that we all have and it's encouraging other networks and creating um, networks and communities with people as well. It's mostly cost saving and I would say that because most of the tools that we have nowadays, whether it's laptops or computers, um, video cameras, phones, stuff like that, it's mostly affordable to people. Of course that's generalising and not everyone can afford things. Um, and also social media used to be more free than it used to than it is nowadays. To be seen on Twitter, to be seen on Facebook in particular, you pretty much have to pay to be seen to a lot of your followers now. So just keep a, a few things like that in mind. Um, and um, it's giving people the opportunity to create. So there's so many creators nowadays. And it's just like everything now. You have to sometimes sift through the rubbish to get to the good stuff. But it's just, you know, there's more potential for great stuff. And um, no longer people are looking to mainstream people, mainstream media, whether it's our politicians or parents or um, religions for advice or for what to do. They're looking for the, to their peers and to other people who act like them or look like them. You can't read that. That's like a lot of um, some vegan activists talking about social media and how they use it. Can you read these numbers at all? So um, whenever people ask me, what channel should I use? We've listed, you know, I've said there's over 200 channels. So this is where I would start. Now from the top, Facebook's on 1.71 billion users. These are stats from the beginning of the year. And um, you've got Flickr, 1.12 million, Google Plus, 300 million, Instagram, 400. Um, what are the other ones we use? Twitter, 320, and YouTube, 1 billion plus. So this is a good guide of where to start and to work out where your audience is or where your customer base is. And what I say to people, I'm not really a fan of Facebook, can't stand it most of the time, but most people are on Facebook. So that means if you're trying to get to a target audience or a particular audience, you need to be on Facebook. It's just how it goes. So the three things, or hopefully one of the things that you take from me today is, um, this is one of my tips. So you need to be creating content, you need to schedule content, and you need to post and interact with them. So they're the three things if you think about in regards to social media. Um, so create, schedule, post and interact. And um, if you create stuff that is your own, as in branded, that's even better. Because not everyone's going to have it. Like any meme that anyone over the world can share. But if it's your own, if you brand it, it's so much better. You need to be able to provide something to people and give something to people. People want to be able to follow someone that they're learning from, that they're getting things from, that they're not just going and seeing the same stuff that they're seeing in every other channel that they follow. You have to know what to say, you have to know your audience well and your topic. 
And just think outside of the square a bit, like especially with the means. Anyone can share a meme. Think of something different, how you can do things differently. And you need to share on a regular basis. Um, not very clear, is it, with the sun? So this is just um, an image of the best times to post on Facebook. And it used to be Wednesdays at 1 p.m., but now it's saying you've got 32% on Sundays and 32% on Saturdays, and they're at 1 p.m., 3 p.m. or 9 a.m. So see, Sunday, 9 a.m., Saturday, 3 p.m., they're the best sort of times. So yeah, and like I just said before, it used to be Wednesday at 1 p.m. And there's some other things that you can do to work out when the best time for you specifically in your personal channel are as well. We don't have that much time to go through them today. But if you have a look at your analytics on your Facebook page, you can find out if you have a look at the things you post, when you post them, how much interaction you got. And if you're having a look and everything's working on a Thursday at 6 p.m., then that's the best time for you to post. So this is a really good guide, but keep in mind your own personal pages might be different. And the same with Twitter as well. Um, the best time here we've got Sunday at 12 p.m. and Friday and Saturday at 5 and 6 p.m. So, um, does anyone know about auditing? Has anyone done anything like that before with their channels or anything? So this is the, when I get new clients with social media or marketing, this is the first thing that I do. So I'll go onto their social media pages, go onto their website, and either check, um, check everything off or put a red mark, and we have to work on those sort of things. So, um, I don't know if you want to take notes or you just want to think about these in your head. What you want to do is write down all your social media channels you've got. Some of them you might even forget you've got, so maybe just do a Google search to double check. How many have you got? And you want to check that your branding is exactly the same across all the channels. So if you've got, if you've got a logo, we want that logo on everything. If you've got, have you seen the little um, banners that go across, let's say Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, YouTube, you want that to be the same across all your channels too. So when, we, when you're seeing people and they're going to your different channels, you want them to remember that branding, whether it's the, the colours that you're using, the typeface you're using, anything like that, you want them to remember that, to remember your brand. And you want to make sure that all the links you're actually using and the information work. Because there's so many people that I'll go onto their Facebook page and the links to go to their website do not work. That's really not good enough. And, um, and so when you go to say facebook.com forward slash and then your name or your URL, you want those to be similar or the same across all your channels. So on Facebook, say mine, vivalavegan.net, is the same as my Instagram channel. Doesn't fit on Twitter, so it's a bit different. But most of them, you want them to be the same. So think about that as well. You want to update your biography, your about, your description, all those things. If you haven't done it for five years, it's probably a good time to update it. And um, in regards to sharing, I really want you to focus on your own brand and content. That's what you want to be sharing. You don't want to be sharing the same stuff that every single other vegan page is sharing. How many vegans have we got in the room, actually? Okay, cool. So I'll just relate everything back to vegan stuff then, okay? Um, <clears throat> So when you're getting interaction, when you're um, sharing stuff on your channels, what sort of things are getting the most interaction? Is it photos? Is it videos? Is it quotes that you share? Have a look at these things. And the things that are working the best, maybe you need to create some more of those or do something like that. Nowadays, it's pretty much anything that's pretty sort of food. 
that seems to get the most content, and the, well, has a lot of content and seems to get the most likes and comments and shares. So I like to break that up with sharing something that's educating people about something or something they might not already know. And all my friends will always say, you know, I'll share something about this animal sanctuary, I'll share something about feminism, and you know, 10 people will like it put up a, a nice photo of your dinner and they have hundreds of people liking it. So try to balance it a bit. Um, and it can be very disappointing sometimes with that. And another thing, um, you want to be responding. If someone's asking a question, if someone's saying something on your channel, you need to be responding to them. So with the term social media marketing, what one of those words do you think is the most important? Social, exactly. But so many people forget that. So think about you need to be social, you need to be interacting with people. And um, how do you know what, if what you're doing is working? Do people know some of the things online? Do they, how do they know your ads work? How do you know that a blog post or something like that works? There's a lot of ways to work that out. And yeah, we don't necessarily have time for that today, but just have a look, even just scrolling down your page with the interaction you're getting, that's a great start. And if you're getting a negative feedback, negative conversations, anything rude or judgmental, how are you dealing with that? Are you dealing with that? You need to be dealing with those sort of things. Now there's some things that you might want to focus on. How many people have been running like a page for over five years? So? Okay, so all maybe newish sort of pages. I've been running mine for over a decade. So um, it's sometimes, you know, it's good to get other people to help. Sometimes it's good to get other people to post things or interact. But you need to make sure everything, everyone's on the same page. Now what I suggest with people is work out what content you already have. So I was talking to a few people before, like photos, videos, things like that, work out what you already have. And it's easy just to make a list of that, like a Word document, Pages document, and you can copy and paste those sort of those, that information, like the links, and share them anytime you like. And then from that, I would work out what you need. So you've got a lot of videos, but you don't have a lot of maybe blogs, you don't have a lot of articles you're sharing. You've got all this information that's your own stuff, but you're not really sharing much information about what other people are doing, other sanctuaries, other not-for-profits, it would be good to share. And I'll put together a bit of a schedule and work out when you're going to share things, what, certain, what days or what times you're going to share them, and who's going to do that. For example, if you're in a band or if you're in a group or a team, you could divide the work between people. So if someone really likes Twitter, they're in charge of Twitter. Someone likes Facebook, they could do posts on Facebook and interact. So just break it up like that. Or even like Monday, Monday someone does all the work for all the social media channels, Wednesday someone else. I use um, a, a website called Hootsuite. Has anyone heard of that? So that's a way to schedule a lot of a lot of things on social media. So H O O T S U I T E dot com, and I would schedule most of my posts. But keep in mind, like I said before, you want to interact with people as well. So always make sure you sign into channels and comment and interact with people if you have your questions. And um, Facebook, you can also um, schedule posts. Did everyone know that? So yeah, I'd use that if you could. And I think on Facebook, you can only do it up to a month or a few months. But keep these things in mind. You want to make things easy for you. Um, and it's really good to know how to measure your return on investment. How do you know if my ads work? How do you know if this post is working? And find out a bit more about those sort of things. Google Analytics is really cool for websites. And then you can also base it on shares or comments or likes. Um, and um, 
know what sort of things you should be posting on different platforms. So say for example, on Instagram, it's purely visual, so you don't want to be sharing too much text on an image with Instagram, whereas like Google Plus and even Facebook, you can share a bit more text. So just know the platforms. And you can also learn from other groups. What are other people doing? Like learn what they're doing. Um, here's some information about why people follow brands. So the main thing is that they're interested in their products and services. Interested in promotions. They're entertaining. Offered an incentive. Interested in their industry to communicate with the brand, which is happening a lot more in particular with younger people, and their friends follow or like that content. And let's compare with why people unfollow brands. So the first one is too much promotional messages. And I go onto lots of pages and say, buy this, I'm about to sell out of this, buy my ebook, like my ebook, make sure you like this post, follow me on Twitter, rah, rah, rah. That's it, that's all they share. It's the information about themselves all the time. Too much, we don't want that. Um, the next one why people unfollow is information is not relevant. They tweet too much. Use of slang um, or it doesn't fit the brand. They're too quiet or they don't reply to me. And now yeah, that's only 15% that don't reply to me, which is a, which I thought would be a lot higher, to be honest. And um, Twitter is a different platform. You can tweet a lot more, you can engage a lot more with people. But say Facebook, people, if you're if you're saying something eight times a day, that's going to be too much for people. So um, here's some ideas of what you can share online, maybe some things you need to focus on more. One of the main things you need to focus on is visuals. And with visuals, I mean photos, I mean videos, I mean something that you can create that you already have into a visual representation. So it's better to get these things shared and you can show people something much easier than they, they can read it. There's a lot of people that still can't read very well either and you're making sure that they can understand it just by seeing it. And for original and branded content, there's a couple of things I'd suggest. Has anyone heard of pickmonkey.com? It's a really good one. It's um, really easy. I'm not an editor, I'm not a graphic designer at all, but I can use it, I can do things on that. Um, and Keynote, which is on the Mac, which is how you create presentations, similar to PowerPoint. And you can just drag things onto it, put text over it. I'm getting excited with this. And um, you, can, you can work out how you want things to look. So just use the things that are available on your computer. I don't really like to pay for many editing tools, so just use things that are free and online. And I would suggest if you're, if you're a photographer, if you're sharing something with your own content, brand it. And you can put a little watermark of your logo on it because people share things all the time and no one seems to credit each other anymore. So if you watermark something, there's a much more of a chance it will stay on there. And share across all the channels. Here's something I created on photojoiner.net and it's how to make collages. So I'm the president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society in Queensland, which is my home state in Australia. And this is just an example of some of our committee members. So um, I just dragged photos of each of us around here with our logo in the middle. It took me a few minutes to create. It was just something else we could put online. There's a website that I really like called behappy.me and I create a lot of quotes on that. So some of my clients are really um, hard to promote. So like money, finance or superannuation. Um, retirement sort of stuff. It's really hard to get um, great interaction online for those sort of products. But I use some of the information and I create images with the information. So see how I'm creating text-based stuff or information and making it into a visual. So try and think that sort of way. And so yeah, your own content. You want this to be your own self. No one can find anyway. You want people to come to you because you know what you're talking about. You're creating new stuff. They're coming to you for information. 
and you become an expert in your industry. And you know, we want to be sharing all this information, you want to be sharing the stuff you create, you want to share different things, not just the visuals, but also events, information, feedback. That's another thing with the client that's superannuation related, we've got a lot of feedback. So I filmed some feedback with Q&As with um, some of the members and we also put that into text which became some of the little images as well. So just think outside of the square of how you can use what you have. You want to share your social media profiles on all your other channels so people know that they can find you in other places, especially on your website. So many people just they think, oh yeah, people will find you on Facebook, um, I'm on Twitter, but no one puts it on their website where you can find it quite easily. And you want to link to your channels, especially like I said on your on your website, on your email signature, and on your mailing lists. Um, encourage people to share or to like or to retweet things that you share. Can you read that? Okay. So what you want to do, we were talking about this before with the blog you guys were talking about launching. So if you think about these sort of things with the blog, um, website and blog is still important. It's your own information, it's your own blog. A lot of people put a lot of time and energy into posting on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, Google Plus, Instagram all the time, but don't do anything on their own website. You know, that sort of stuff, all the social media stuff's great, but if you're getting people to your own website to see your own stuff, so much better. Um, so think think about some of these things that you can you can create. So articles, blogs, ebooks, store, presentation videos. Um, an example of this um, is okay. Say the one I was talking about before about getting some feedback from members. Um, you can get feedback from other people depending on what sort of product you're selling or business you're running. And um, you could create these into different things. So you've got a video of it, you've got the text of it, so you can use the text online and you're creating a visual as well. I did a um, FAQ series on YouTube a few years ago, so I was doing one or two every week for a couple of years. So I created a, a video answering different questions that people get asked all the time about veganism. From that, I had people transcribe the videos for me, so then I had the text. From that, I'm creating an ebook with that information, and I can also use that information as blogs. So if you think about from that one video, I've got three or four other different types of content just from that. So that's what I want you to think about more. Not just, oh yeah, that's a photo or a video I've got, but how can it create and how can I spread it in different ways with that, that initial idea. <coughs> like I said before, everyone needs to engage more with people and communicate better be sociable. So ask more questions, responding often. If someone asks you a question, you want to respond. Um, and you want, shorter posts are always good. I've got a couple of clients and I always say to them, think about a Twitter post instead of a blog post because they always send me these long things that I'm meant to fit on Twitter. So if you think about shorter things that get to the point immediately, that's really good. Um, you want to use the plus, which is a Google thing, or the at to connect with others. You want to use hashtags as well to create um, interaction and to be included in conversations. See what people are involved with, get involved with communities and groups. There's so many vegan groups. Groups seem to be where everything's happening at the moment, in particular on Facebook. So get involved with that. Um, I just read a great article about um, millennials are getting into um, emails and mailing lists nowadays. And I don't see why that's such a surprise because I thought, it, I thought emails were great for a long time and everyone's just focused too much on the social media. But see, emails, once you send an email to someone, they've got it until they delete it. With social media, there's a like limited amount of times that you're going to see these things from people. So keep those sort of things in mind, collect email addresses. 
Um, we want people to be getting things that are of benefit to them, that they're getting something out of, that they're learning from. Well, people want to share these things. So before posting something, maybe ask yourself a few questions. Is it beneficial? Is someone getting something out of it? And the important thing, will people want to share this? Um, here, here's some ideas if you have different people that post and respond on your page. <laughs> Um, you want to take it in turns like Monday someone's turn, Tuesday someone else's. You want to schedule updates. You want to use tools to measure the return on investment. You want to share the visuals, share your social media things, link to all your channels, encourage people to share and retweet. And here's some different things to focus on. So, um, so social media is what's called earned media, and your mailing list is as well. But your own owned media is your website and digital goods. So that includes like eBooks and video series and things like that. And paid media, which we all pretty much have to be involved with nowadays, especially if you want people to see you on Facebook, and that's your advertising. <coughs> Here's some ideas for what you can share online. So it just depends what you want to do. Ask yourself if you want to create a conversation, if you want to educate or inform, if you want to share visuals, link to your website, gauge opinions, entertain or be inspirational. So um, if you're not already doing some of these, I'd like you to add a few of those. So we want to have, say, for example, conversation piece on Mondays, a visual on Wednesday, and breaking it up and using different things all the time. You don't want to see the same stuff all the time. So here's some ideas if you break it down. On Monday, share like an article or blog that's from your own website. Tuesday, you can share a video that you've created. And then you can also put that to YouTube, Vimeo, and Facebook. On Wednesday, create a photo, which you can also put on your website or blog. A podcast on Thursday. And a podcast, I do a lot of podcasts that's just detaching the audio from my videos as well. So that's another way that you can do podcasts. And podcasts are really taking off and they will in the next few years as well, especially from a business perspective. So have a think about doing podcasts if you, if you haven't done that yet. And Friday would be a quote. And remember not just to share it on one social media channel, it's across the board. So here's some other ideas. Can you read those? So not just blogs and articles, but maybe some recipes, reviews, mentoring, Q and A's. <coughs> One of the things that's really um, necessary in this day and age is consistency, consistency and commitment. So this means you have to update a lot. You have to you have to be available to share your life, or at least to share time in your life to people. You have to be able to answer what people are asking of you, questions they're asking, information if they need more about a product. There's a lot that you need to do really nowadays. And you need to have really good time management skills and you need to keep on top of these things. You need to set expectations of what you can do. Like have sort of boundaries in place. So for example, I do um, social media Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I schedule things throughout the week, but I'm online those times and I interact with people those times. And I don't have anything on my phone either. I don't have notifications or anything all the time. They're boundaries I've set in place because I'm on the computer all the time. I'm doing this all the time. Don't want to be walking around with it, you know, 24 seven. Um, you need to post regularly and not just as often as you can this week when you're feeling like you're going to post a lot. There's so many people that are like, oh, I'm going to write a blog, I'm going to do this. And they're so excited about their blog for like a month and they've posted every single day for a month. And then you're like, oh, what happened to your blog? Oh, I just got too much, been too hard to keep it up. So it's great when you have that initial enthusiasm 
but create those and maybe just schedule them once a month or once a week or something like that. If you focus on creating a lot of stuff at once and you um, schedule them, say, once a month on your blog, you can add more stuff if you have the time, if once a, you know, once every two weeks in between or something. But as long as you've got that regular sort of consistency, the people will go, oh, it must be that sort of time he's going to put a blog up this, this week. Or... So, yeah, you want to have really clear goals and you want to be able to stick to them. And be realistic with what you commit, can commit to and just stick with it. Um, lots of people used to say it took about six months to develop an online following and a platform, um, but now it's more realistically about one, one to two years. So if you compare that to new businesses, it's sort of similar, so if you're creating a new business, you're working on that stuff. So that's the best comparison I would give for that. <laughs> So emails are awesome to convert customers, especially if you're giving them something for free, like FAQs, an ebook, free stuff like that. And you want to be building your own digital assets and you're showing that you're a leader, leader in the community. You're showing that you're somewhere to go, that people can go to to get all this information. Um, some things that I want you to focus on is doing your own research and finding out actual facts because oh, we all know there's a lot of facts in the world. Some aren't necessarily factual. Um, and we want to find out information from reliable sources. So um, just think about those sort of things and just learn more and do better. We want to be showing people that we're pretty awesome as vegans. Um, and yeah, just one thing that I always like to mention, just because someone is the loudest or the most aggressive online doesn't mean they're the most right. And just because someone's got a heap of followers doesn't mean they know more than someone who has like 10 followers, 100 followers. Um, and I just wanted to go across a few different things that you may not be thinking of when you're interacting online or things that you're sharing online and just breaking it down into different areas. So um, the first one's about health. Um, so veganism over the years has changed a lot. I've been vegan for 20 years, just celebrated my anniversary in January. 20 years ago, being vegan was healthy. It really was. Um, nowadays, it's quite easy to eat all the junk that you can, you know, there's so many things that you can eat, and most people do, because it's easy, it's around, but that's not necessarily healthy. And if we're telling people, yeah, go vegan, you'll lose weight, you'll clean your skin up, you'll do this, you'll cure your cancer, you'll cure this, rah, rah, what happens if they become vegan and they're not losing weight, they're putting on weight? Most of those people aren't going to stay vegan for very long because of these things that they were told. So you have to be truthful with people and just say, yeah, people can lose weight on a vegan diet, but not if you're consuming a lot of the processed food. If you're focusing just on the whole foods and the vegan staples, you could. Um, and just be, just be aware of that. I've had so many, all these things that I'm listing here, I've seen online so many times. And I've seen so many people that are, you know, people that are wheelchair bound, people saying, just have to go vegan, it'll be cured. And you're like, oh my gosh, what are these people doing? And really, it's not a cure all. Veganism doesn't cure everything. And um, you just need to be realistic and truthful. You can say, hey, it really helped me. I cured my cancer, or I cured this, or I cured that. But that's for you specifically. And yeah, link back to factual stuff, like scientifically based information on these things. And um, you know, one of, one of the things that um, I've noticed a lot lately, in particular with younger girls, is veganism is bringing a lot of restrictive eaters to the movement. And we want to show people that you can eat a lot of food and it's okay if you eat oil or eat sugar or things like that. Um, and we want to be encouraging people to be vegans long term. If you're telling people you can only eat bananas, you can only eat mangoes, you can only eat stuff that doesn't have oil, how long do you think they're going to be keeping that up? Not very long. Well, even if they do, it's definitely... 
Yeah, it's definitely not healthy. That's right. And we want to show you that there's different types of vegans that exist. There's not just one type of vegan. Um, but what about the environment? There's so many, so many packaged foods. In particular, in Australia, we've got a lot of packaged foods from the US and the UK, and they're coming over. And you know, it's healthy. We're saying veganism is great for the environment. We're saying we're doing these awesome things. What about the food miles? What about the packaging? What about all the stuff that goes into these things? You know, you just have to be a bit realistic about some of these things. And um, you know, for people, I'm you know myself as a vegan. I went vegan because I cared about the animals. But over time, I've learnt more about a lot of social justice issues. And if you don't know about other things, I really encourage you to find out more about them. And you know, there's a lot of people. So many people online are really horrible to abattoir workers, for example. But I've never met anyone who said at school, "I'm going to be an abattoir worker." Do you know anyone? I've never met anyone. So what sort of life or circumstances do you think they would have to be in to do that sort of job? You know, and it's maybe having a bit more compassion about people in the world. And um, do, you know, the products that you love and the products that you use are humans being used in a horrible way just as much as our animal friends are with some other products. Really like think about these sort of things. And also, um, in regards to female bodies, there's a lot of types of female bodies that are used and female bodies that aren't allowed to be used. Like cows, that's all right to use them, but other types of females are not really good. So, you know, try and encourage people to see the links between these things and be open and just, you know, engage in a different way. And there's different types of bodies, there's different types of people who are vegan. We need to see more types of these online. Um, I think, you know, with, in regards to social justice movements, the more we learn about how things interact and how things all help each other, the more we can learn about other people and the more we can have great conversations and find out how these things link and how we can use things like that. And um, <clears throat> I think a really good example is like the LGBTQI community. There's a lot of people who um, has support what those every, those people do or that movement does. They don't necessarily have to be lesbian, they don't necessarily have to be gay, but they support what they're doing. I personally think we need more a lot of a more allies in the vegan movement. They're not necessarily vegan, they're not necessarily vegetarian, but they can really help spread the movement. And um, I just wanted to mention, like, when we're talking and what we're sharing online, a lot of us have privileges. Like, you know, we've been able to, myself in particular, I've been able to travel here. A lot of us have been able to pay to come into here. We've been able to pay to have food. We've been able to sit down and enjoy the beautiful weather and to be able to listen. I hope most of you can understand me and that we're all talking the same language. There's different things that we just take, you know, for granted that we're not aware of that are actual privileges. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people um, who just don't have the same choices that we do. And there's a lot of discussions I get into with people that say, oh, everyone should be able to be vegan. That, yeah, that's a great idea. It would be great if everyone could be vegan. But not everyone is able to, whether it's the place they live in, whether they have access to fruit and vegetables, whether they have access to public transport to be able to get out of certain areas. So just remember, um, we all have choices, but some of us have much better choices than others. So just really be mindful when you're talking to people. Um, and in regards to... Um, you know, you have to think about some people can't choose not to eat certain things. They just want to be able to get through the day and just eat whatever they're given. Some people can't afford to buy new vegan clothes or vegan shoes. You know, they just use whatever they've got. <clears throat> some people can't access transportation to go to restaurants. There's a lot of people that are vegan, they're like, oh, I only go to vegan places. That's awesome. It's really good to 
be promoting the vegan places and supporting them. But some people don't have that option. Um, some people kind of t attend these sort of events and, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, you need to be more active, you need to be an activist, you need to go protest and demo demos. Some people can't physically attend demos, some people mentally will not be able to cope with those sort of things. That doesn't mean they're less, less of a vegan or less of an activist. Um, some people don't feel comfortable amongst another sect or amongst other people that they think understand more or more educated them than them. And um, some people feel they can't sort of share what they're feeling as well. And I just wanted to um, make mention of um, the way that black vegans are sometimes used as props. And I just wanted to mention that they don't need to be used to um, further our, our movement. We can, we can learn from other people who have already said these things, who are actually black vegans that know what they're talking about and are speaking from the heart. It's better to share these things. It's better to go to these people and share their stuff rather than just putting our version of what we think they believe onto it. In regards to what we're saying online and how we're interacting with people, I really want you to think about some of these things. I really want you to be more compassionate and more mindful towards people. And you know, we want to be creating discussions and it's so easy for people to just, you know, write everyone who doesn't agree with them in whatever area of them. It's so easy to, to do that. So we want to be sharing ideas and having a good conversation. So just think about these things in regards to how you're interacting with people, whether it's online or in person. What sort of language are you using? Is it positive or negative? Is it encouraging? Is it discouraging? Is it empathetic or judgmental? Is it preaching or is it teaching? What about um, racist language? I've seen so many people online when they're talking about whether it's um, J Japan and whaling, whether it's the Middle East and the live trade, whether it's China and dog meat. There's all these racist, lang all this racist language that's being used for that. Don't need to do that. You can still have a good debate or a good um, conversation with people without using these sort of things. What about some trigger words? There's a lot of words that people use that are quite intense, that really might upset people if you use them that you're not aware of. And some of them might be like slave, rape, concentration camps. And a lot of people I've seen use these words to promote veganism. We don't need to be using those to promote them. And um, like I was saying before, um, as vegans, most of you, I'm sure, are not health professionals or have studied any health or nutritional science whatsoever. So please don't give unsolicited health advice to people unless you know the facts, unless you know their medical history. And um, yeah, don't tell people they can be cured by things if they go vegan. And use different types of people and different bodies to promote veganism. Um, here's some information of, on why people stay vegan. So um, there's one to two percent of the population is vegan. And this, this hasn't really changed for about 20 years. There's a lot of people who are eating more plant-based diets. There's a lot of people who are flexitarian. But in regards to the ethical vegan lifestyle, as in not just food, there's not that many more vegans. And um, animal welfare is the most effective way to get people to change. I don't necessarily agree with some of these things, but these are what um, studies have been done about it. And this has come from Humane League Labs. Has anyone heard of that? It's um, based in the US, so I suggest that you subscribe. They've got a really good mailing list and a lot of information that they do online. Um, so <clears throat> it's re they do a lot of research on the effectiveness of certain things, so they're really cool. So animal welfare is the most effective, and then health reasons are second best. And um, it's hard when you think 
something's more important than other people do. And it's really hard to have conversations with people when you're trying to get them to care about what you care about and that they don't care about that. So just try and make people where they are and have a conversation. Instead of trying to convert people, just try and have a conversation and spread something. Um, so if we just try and focus on different different ways that we can spread veganism and um, think about long-term commitment, how people can focus on these things and commit to a long-term commitment to veganism and encourage other people and be inclusive as well. That's really important. Um, so yeah, just try and focus on different ways that you can still get to the same the same area. So planting seeds. That's my that's my thing nowadays. Twenty years ago when I was first vegan, I was a bit more intense with people and trying to create everyone into vegans and telling them about all the horrible stuff that happens to animals because that's why I went vegan. So I just assumed everyone else would go vegan. You know, it doesn't happen that easily, does it? <clears throat> So yeah, our way is not the only way. And if you if you get that idea and you really understand it, and for me as well, it's helped be like non-attachment and non-judgment. And then you know I can have a conversation with someone, and it doesn't matter if you know it's great if they become vegan. It's great if they learn something more that they haven't learned before. Um, <clears throat> so. I really want you to be careful what you share online because what you're sharing is a reflection of the whole movement, whether you like it or not. And you might be the only vegan that someone comes in contact with. Can everyone still hear me? Do I need to put it up? Hmm. Maybe that? Is that louder? Um, so if you've got people, various people that are posting on behalf of you or your company, Everyone needs to know what they're meant to be saying. Like, don't be swearing at people when they've said that you've done something wrong. Or don't, you know, engage the trolls. Or things like that. You've got to really be mindful and really make sure every single person knows what they're talking about. Um, just recently I got a few emails um, through a few of my different pages on Facebook someone trying to get money for an animal sanctuary. I've never heard of this person that was supposedly from this animal sanctuary and it was like a plea, we need all this money. So I sent it to the people I knew from the animal sanctuary and I said, who is this person? And um, they said, oh, we're sorry, you know, we're trying to raise money for this, but we didn't know what they were saying. And I just said, look, I suggest that you write something together that you can just copy and paste and say something like, hey, you know, um, I'm Jody, I'm just new at whatever that your sanctuary is. We've got quite a few events that are coming up. We're always trying to raise some money for it. If you can help out in any way, we'd like your help. Something like that, because the way they put it across to me, I'm just like, this is not professional. And I was, and I'm lucky I know the people that are involved with the sanctuary, so I could say that to them. And they were shocked as well. They didn't even know what she was saying. So now they're going to have a conversation with her, and I've sent them some good guidelines or like a Google Doc where they can send to people and they can fill in and stuff like that. So <clears throat> just keep in mind those sort of things. Um, if you wouldn't say it to someone's face, like if I'm sitting here next to you, if I'm not going to say something to your face, I'm not going to say it to you online. And I wish more people would do those sort of things or think about that. And um, don't abbreviate or use slang. I see this all the time and there's so many things. I'm like, what does that mean? I have to Google it all the time. So make sure every single person knows what you're talking about. And that means if you're using an abbreviation, write what it means first with the abbreviation next to it in brackets. <laughs> um, there's so many vegans that only care about animals. Heaps of my friends don't care about humans. Quite happy to tell anyone or ask them. But we really need to be caring more about each other. We really need to know, you know, as vegans, we're animals too. As people, we're animals too. And if we're caring about animals, we should extend that a bit. So just think about that a bit more. And um, I'm just going to go over some online etiquette, one of my favourite topics. 
and I just want people to be nice to each other. You cannot read that, can you? I can't even read it. It's a very good quote. Um, there's a guy called Jamie Bartlett, actually, from Demos. Does anyone know that? The Think Tank here. Tank here. It's like tech-based sort of stuff, and they do a lot of um, uh, studies on, say, for example, how social media impacts general elections. Um, he's just written a new book called Radicals, and I'm going to the book launch on Tuesday in Belgium, so I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, it was his, his um, quote about um, the... The, mo the loudest sort of people in our in our movements are all the ones that people pay attention to, uh, just because they're the loudest. So, just a reminder of, you know, um, don't don't get caught up in those sort of people and think for yourselves. Um, so yeah, you can still disagree with someone and be nice. You can. It's easy. Easier. And um, yeah, like I said before, you might be the only vegan that someone comes in contact with, whether it's online or in person. So whatever you're doing, they're seeing that, they're judging that, they're remembering it. There's so many people that I've met that say, oh yeah, I would have been vegan 10 years ago if it wasn't for that dickhead that talked to me, rah, 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 rah. So I'm just like, oh, okay, that's good to know. But um, yeah, just remember those sort of things when you're interacting with people. <laughs> There's this really cool quote that I'll read to you because you probably can't read from there. And this um, lawyer, I think she might be, well, she works in the Supreme Court, so Ruth, Ruth Badger Ginsburg. And she's just talking about um, good advice that she wanted to share. And she's saying, yes, yeah, she's got good advice. And it came from her savvy mother in law. And she gave her an advice on her wedding day. And she said, in every good marriage, it helps sometimes to be a little deaf. So I think it can bring this into normal everyday life as well. Sometimes it helps just to forget some of the rubbish people say and to move on. It really doesn't help going, oh my god, that person said another thing about me last month. I can't believe they said that. Even last year, you run into someone, you said that thing about me last year online. Let it go. Um, so online etiquette, do people know what that means? Do you follow that? Hopefully. Hopefully you're all top of the class for online etiquette. Um, so it just means to be courteous online and be nice to each other online. So yeah, if you wouldn't say it offline, don't say it online. And um, if you type something, you better mean it. You know, words are really powerful. They can hurt, they can harm, and they can inspire. So you want to be inspiring people with your words. And um, if you think something you've written is going to embarrass someone, don't say it, don't interact, don't do anything like that. Um, this is my top 10 tips for online etiquette. Can you read that at the back? No, not really. Okay, so first tip, this is actually one of my probably general in life tips, is acts don't react. So, you know, people tend to just go off like this, especially online, and you don't need to. Um, the second is to keep private matters private. So if someone has a problem, I see this a lot with vegan businesses and restaurants in particular, someone will give feedback on whether it was something that came in correctly or whatever, and they'll put it on Facebook, and the owner will respond, then they respond, and it gets worse, and there's words said and everything. So if you come to that sort of problem, challenge, um, you could take that offline. So if someone's commented on something with your business, you say, first of all, you have to respond. That's really important, no matter if it's a negative. And you say, thanks for the feedback. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Can you please contact me on this number or this email address? I'd really like to sort it out for you. That's all you have to do. Do you think that's pretty simple? I think that's pretty simple. So you're bringing that issue offline. You're taking responsibility for it too. <clears throat> Use the correct spelling, grammar and punctuation. Be really mindful of what you share. Um, be conscious of who will read your posts. 
a lot of people have their grandmas, their ex-boyfriends, their college friends, their friends from year six. They've got all these people that are friends with them on Facebook. So I'm sure not everyone is going to care about everything in the same way that you share online. Um, so just be kind, be your kind self. More people need to do that. So if you're not doing that, really focus on that, please. And the more you're kind, the easier it will be to become kind to. Keep your passwords safe and hard to guess. Who here uses the same password on every account that they have? Can I see a few? Yeah, I can see a few of you in the audience. <laughs> so maybe just make it a bit harder for people or even bots nowadays to guess your passwords and um, yeah, just things that you can remember. So an example that I give to people is a word that's not in the dictionary. So if, it's, if there's a word that you can find in the dictionary, it's really easy to work out that password. So use a word and maybe say the password's like dairy, which is on the back of that poster from Viva. Um, and instead of using an A, you can, put, you can put a T where all the A's are. Or you put an R where the Y's are. Not just like an at symbol for an A or something like that that anyone can guess. You're talking about something completely different only you know. And some numbers. And even like if you're using that same word and some numbers, and then if you're using on Twitter, put T T W or T R or something. Facebook F A or F B or something. So using the same stuff for different um, channels, you're using a slightly different password. That I find is a bit easier for people to use. If someone's mean online, if you see someone, whether they're bullying someone, whether they're being horrible to someone, you are able to support. You're able to report cyberbullying. If you see it, say something about it. It's not cool. And even if you see someone interacting with someone and bullying someone online, trolling someone, you can say, hey, your behavior is trolling. I've reported you. Something like that. Um, credit people if you use their creations. I see this all the time. Everyone just seems to just take stuff off the internet and they're like, oh, this is a beautiful photo. And people are like, oh, who, whose photo? Is that yours or did you create them? And like, oh, no, I just found it on the internet. It's awesome if you go, I love this photo. It's created by this person. No, not that hard. Um, take responsibility for everything you do online. Um, I did this handout recently. Oh, gee whiz, you can't read that. So we might skip over my handout. It's a really awesome handout. Um, and oh, there, there you go. You can read a couple of these things. Um, so the digital detox. Who's addicted to their phone? Has their phone on them all the time? I'm glad not many of you while I'm asking this are on your phone. So you get bonus points for that. But um, I think it's really awesome to be aware of how we're using digital devices, social media. You know, we're all connected all the time. And that's awesome, that's great. There's so many things we can do with it, but it's good to have boundaries in place so they're not ruling our lives, so we're actually gaining something from it. So um, turn off your notifications on your phone. If you have notifications on your phone from every single app that you have, you're going to get notifications all the time. One of my friends recently um, getting ready to go out and I said, oh, just delete those notifications on your phone just before I went. And he was still there 10 minutes later going through turning all the notifications off. It was quite horrifying. Um, schedule your time to actually check emails, whether it's first thing in the morning after you've had breakfast, whether it's before you finish the day in the afternoon. You don't need to have your emails on the phone to you all the time as long as you're scheduling that time. Um, a security thing is to log out of everything. Once you use something, log out of it. It's so easy for people to take you know, things that you have, in particular if you're logged into things. So anything, I know it's annoying, I know that it's a hassle to always put your email and your password in, but it's really good to be conscious of that sort of stuff and to do it. 
Um, using your phone all the time. I know so many people that use it as their alarm. First thing they look at in the morning, first thing they, last thing they look at when they go to sleep. These are really bad habits to get into. There's things called clocks as well. You know, I've got one on my, my finger that you can have them on your wrists or bedside table. You know, they're really helpful too for the thing called the time. <clears throat> Leave your phone on silent. So rude. There's so many people. Like, I go out to lunch with some of my friends. They sit there, messages come on, notification. You know, thing like that all the time. I'm like, you know, I could have brought a book. You know, it would have been much more fun than just, you know, sitting here in front of you, watching you on your phone. So, you know, be, be nice to people. Be mindful. And, yeah, the next tips, be present and be attentive to others. That's what we're meant to be doing. Um, and if you go through your social media channels, the people you follow, do you need to be following these people? Do you know these people? Are they your real friends? Do you care about what they post? Go through every year or six months, just go through, you know, they're not bringing joy into my life. I don't want to be seeing their horrible posts all the time. You, can even, you don't even have to delete them, you can just block some of the posts that they do. Um, and make sure you check your privacy settings on all social media channels. They change them all the time. And they're not really good things that you automatically are signed up for as well. Um, remember to create daily routines you can commit to, whether it's emails, whether it's social media posts, whether it's exercise to start off the day. Um, say yes to more things that you love and say no to the things that you really don't want to do. Um, learn something new, like whether it's a musical instrument, a new language, or something that really excites you. And you want to spend quality time with people you love, or the animals you love, or something that really is important to you. Um, commit to something outside of your world, something new, something you're going to learn from. It's really important to always be learning. Um, I'm, on, I'm at the desk all the time on my computer, so doing a few stretches, doing something, Pilates, swimming, whatever you like, you know, make sure you do more of that. Um, make lists. Um, this year, uh, being the president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland, had a bit of a challenging transition, let's say. So um, I've had a massive to-do list. It's very, very long. And one thing that I started to do a few months into the year was I started to do the things I've achieved list as well. So that really helped my head because the to-do list never ending. It really is. And when you do a list of the things you've achieved, you're like, hey, I'm pretty awesome. I've already ticked those things off on my list, you know. Still working at other things, but I'm doing okay. I'm on the right, I'm on the right path. That really helps. Um, limit the time you read and watch the news. I woke up to text about the London um, uh, things today, and um, yeah, and that's from my friends overseas. Um, and you know, if you need help, if you need someone to help you, or you need time out, always ask for it. It's nothing wrong with that. Um, here's the things that we've covered today. <coughs> We've um, covered the best and the most popular channels to use, um, how to do a social media audit, things to focus on, um, why visuals are important, how to create your own branded content, ideas for shareable content, setting goals, online etiquette, and those tips for taking time out. So I really like you to remember all the information we learnt today and um, focus on cultivating relationships and using social media for the social aspects and for learning more. And um, it's, you know, you want to use social media for the best ways, not, not let it run your life. You need to keep up to date with things that are happening in your movement. You know, always be aware there's always new stuff that's happening. Um, and support other groups and events. I personally don't agree 100% with any group or with any person. I've never met one person I agree with 100%.
And I don't see that that's a problem. You know, I see that that brings awesome conversations and the potential to learn other people's opinions. And, you know, just if you don't agree with the group, you can still attend their events. You can still post some of the content that they create. You know, there's really awesome stuff people are doing. Some of them not all the time, but you can still use this stuff that's created. Um, keep an open mind, try to learn more. And, you know, if you're starting out as a vegan or a vegan blogger or online as a vegan, just try and meet as many like-minded people as you can. And, you know, you can be a bit more selective with people a bit later on down the track. And remember to take some time out for yourself that doesn't have anything to do with veganism or activism. Um, so here's just a few things that you can do today. Um, you can change your email signature, include a fact or a quote. You can join or follow five new pages, five new people. Retweet or share a favourite link, something new you've learned. Comment on something new on a website or a blog. Share something that you found on YouTube or Vimeo. Sign up to receive emails. And, you know, if you're in a position of influence, whether it's as a, a um, parent or as a teacher, use this for good. You know, spread some good stuff. Um, I really want you to focus on learning more, investigating more. Don't just believe stuff that you hear because someone else has told you, because they've got a lot of followers and you believe them. Do your own research. Be genuine, be honest with what you do, and really help to build our community. We need to be all working together more and focusing on the things that we share and the things we have in common, rather than focusing on all the ways that we disagree with each other. And um, lead by example and be consistent. That's probably my top tip. A lot of people ask me for tips for being vegan for 20 years. That would be my top tip. Lead by example and be consistent. And yeah, be the best version of yourself. Um, focus on educating and planting seeds rather than trying to convert people. So many people that are just like, I'm going to have this conversation and they're going to be a vegan by the time I finish. That's really not healthy for anyone. You just want to have an awesome conversation with someone. Try to inspire them, try to be nice and be kind and, you know, just let them learn something new. Always remember kindness and compassion and just show how easy it is to be vegan. And um, I just want you to be the best vegan you can be and I'd like everyone to start now. And um, you can connect with my website, vivalavegan.net, and I'm across all different social media channels. My latest books on vegan athletes, um, and then you can find me, Lee Chantel, um, on leechantel.com, and there's like Facebook, Google, Pinterest, Twitter, all of those. You can follow my European travels the next three months. And um, I hope you've learned something today, and I hope. If you have learned something, you can share it with someone else. And um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you.